Welcome to The Breakdown, where we do just that. We break down every single game on Tuesday, July 23rd. We give you out some leans, how teams are doing against righties, lefties, how their bullpens are pitching, and talk about pretty much every single thing in between. If you are new, my name's Austin. This is episode two. Yesterday on episode one on Monday, you guys showed a ton of great feedback, which was awesome. And so we have a new addition today. Not only will we talk about each game, some games do have uh, starters not listed, so we won't touch too hard on those ones, but we will at the end of the video talk about some hot hitters, some guys that are just scoring scorching hot shout out bobby witt jr and some guys that maybe be might be ice cold also look at some good matchups for pitchers that they're projected to see today those are some feedback that you guys delivered in the comment section down below yesterday as always if you really like these videos hit that like button subscribe to the second channel these will start to go onto the call on our shot channel next week so if you want to see our official plays those will be on call on our shot which i'll link at the end of this video and if you have any other good feedback, leave it down below in the comment section. You guys want to see some good hitters and their matchups or maybe some bad hitters? We're going to do just that. But let's dive into the games. We're we'll start with the first one, a start of a new series. The series, Orioles versus Marlins. Not surprised to see the Orioles favorites here. You know, the Marlins at home, plus 145, give or take even odds on the run line, basically. Over under at eight and a half. Now you got Suarez going for the Orioles. He's been pretty good, pretty consistent. I think he's doing a little bit of regression, but been pretty good. Tyler will go, uh, Kyle Tyler for two first names. He'll go for the Marlins. Don't know a ton about him. Hasn't made a ton of starts this season. 3.380 ERA, not terrible. Baltimore has been a little bit struggling against righties. You know, they they were able to hit around, I believe, what, Scherzer and Evaldi. So a little bit better post-All-Star break, but, you know, been about middle of the pack. Marlins on paper, decent splits for righties, but... I mean, it's hard to really trust the the ball, the the Miami Marlins against anyone here. If I'm going to bet this game, I'm probably looking at either maybe taking an under, given the you know, the bullpens at the end of the game have been pretty solid, or probably just backing the Orioles here. Not a ton that I really want to look in in game one of the series. You kind of see that batting average with runners in scoring position down there. Both teams hitting below 200 over the last two weeks against righty. So really struggling to get those timely hits. Orioles, they got timely hits all last year. It hasn't been as good this year. Still been pretty good. We'll see. They're obviously a team that could be making some moves at the deadline, which is in, what, less than a week. So if I had to bet this one, I lean the O's. Don't know if I want to lay the minus one and a half because I hate Craig Kimbrell, who always seems to sell at the end of the game. But if I had to bet this one, it's not a surprise. I'd probably lean the Orioles. Now, our second game on the slate, we have Tigers versus Guardians. If you bet the Tigers yesterday, which I kind of leaned in that one, with Scoobal on the mound, yeah, it was uh, sweat free. They absolutely smoked the Guardians. Guardians did get a ton of uh, hits up on Tariq Scoobal. Nothing really to show for. What did he give out? Like eight, ten hits? I think they, well, they only scored one run on him. Today, we do have, you know, to be determined. We don't know who's really starting for the Tigers. So I'm not going to stay too hard on this one. I believe it could be Joey Wentz, but I'm not going to look too hard in there. If it is Joey Wentz, then the Guardian stats for righties kind of useless because it would be a lefty. For guys that don't have, for teams that don't have a starter listed, I'm just going to assume it's going to be a righty because that's, you know, the predominantly strong uh, pitching hand for most pitchers. Curry's going for the Guardians. Again, I mean, the Guardians are favored here. I don't trust Joe, uh, Joey Wentz at all if he's the guy that goes out there. But Curry has not been any better. And so I look at this game. I don't really want to lay minus 145 on the Guardians. And and maybe Joey Wentz goes out there. But Curry's just not a guy that I really trust a ton. So this is still a pass for me. The Guardians, not a team I want to lay juice on because they have been stinking it up against righties. You see their splits right down there, 202 last two weeks. Bullpens, I lean towards maybe an under here, but the Tigers are scorching hot, and Curry is uh, not a guy that I trust, so probably a pass on me uh, for this one. If the Guardians were hitting better, I'd probably lean the over here, but this feels like maybe you get a 5-3 final or 4-3 type score. I, I don't really know. Honestly, a game that I'm completely avoiding, and I don't even know who's starting for the Detroit Tigers, so count me out. Next, we have a Paul Skeen sighting. He is starting, obviously started the All-Star game. They skipped his, not didn't skip his rotation, in the, but they gave him a few days off given that start, but Paul Skeens will go against Lance Lynn. Now, yesterday, low-scoring game out in Pittsburgh. Again, they're projecting about the same 7.5 total. Obviously, the Pirates' big favorites, minus 180. I'm not going to come out here and say, hey, you should bet on Lance Lynn. I obviously lean towards betting on Paul Skeens, but everyone's going to be on Paul Skeens. I've already seen his K-prop over about 30 times on my, on my timeline. So I look at this one. The Cardinals have been good against right. He's a top-10 offense last few weeks. Been good with runners in scoring position. Pittsburgh, I don't know if I believe that 278 batting average with runners in scoring position because I feel like any time I've ever backed the the Pitts, uh, Pirates over the last few weeks, I never get timely hits. I still lean the under here because Skeens is absolutely dominant, and I don't know how you can really price that into this one. He's just been too dang good. I think this comes down to will the Pirates be able to get those timely hits on Lance Lynn. 
I don't know. Lance Lynn's been here in hit or miss. You never really know what you're getting from him. I lean the under, but at seven and a half, I don't really like taking a ton of unders because you kind of need everything to go right. Not only do you need Skeens and Land to pitch really well, you also need the bullpens to be to pitch really well. After the game soared under yesterday, it feels like the under will be pretty square today. So probably not a game that I'm really going to touch anything in, whether it's props. I don't really want to bet a Skeens prop, although you probably can at seven and a half. I'll just probably pass on that one. Next series, we have the start of game one in this series. Another game we don't have a starter listed as we have the Padres on the road in the Washington take on the Nationals. Obviously a team that seems to do trades with each other every year. You get Randy Vasquez projected to go for the Padres to be determined on the Nationals here. High total at nine and a half. Randy Vasquez, I've been trying to fade him the last few starts and he always seems to cook me. But we've talked about it before. He's really bad against lefties. So maybe you're looking at like a guy like James Wood or maybe CJ Abrams. But CJ Abrams on the flip side has struggled against righties. So, I mean, well, not struggled, but he has not been as good against righties as he has been against lefties. Washington, last 14 days, borderline top 10 offense against righties. They're getting those timely hits too, which I feel like all came against the Reds when they were able to sweep the Reds. Or on the flip side, Padres offense. Outside of that big game, what they beat the Guardian 7 to 0. Not a lot of offense coming from them, and their bullpen's been pretty bad. Look at that bullpen here, right? Second worst in the majors the last two weeks. Whereas Washington quietly has had a pretty good bullpen over the last few weeks. I don't know if I trust them a ton. They obviously traded away Hunter Harvey, who honestly hadn't been good recently. If I had to back this one, I would lean the Nationals, but I don't know who they're starting. So I can't really come out here and say, hey, bet the Nationals because I don't know who's starting for them. That's where I would lean. Um, Vasquez, I'd probably lean to try to fade him somehow. So he's probably cooking today. I don't really know. Vasquez, I can never get a read on him when I don't touch any of his uh, props or games. He stinks, but when I suddenly bet against him, he becomes the GOAT. Next, we have a big series. The start of the Subway series, Mets at Yankees. Now, this is the first game that I'm pretty confident I will have a play here, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yet the Yankees, pretty sizable favorites, minus 165. Not a surprise. The Yankees, you don't really see them in pickums a ton. Quintana will go for the Mets. Luis Heel will go for the Yankees. Heel's been hit or miss. I mean, Heel looks good. He looks like a Cy Young. And then the moment he walks the guy or gives up an extra base hit, the wheels fall off. He doesn't know how to pitch ever again. A little weird, but that has just been how Luis Heel has pitched over the last month. He's coming off two solid starts, both against, uh, I believe, divisional opponents. I think he faced the Orioles and Blue Jays or Rays, one of those two. Uh, he's got his work cut out for him against the Mets offense that you see on the screen. Pretty good against righties the last two weeks. Have struggled a little bit with runners in scoring position after getting literally every single timely hit in June and beginning of July. A little bit of struggle bust there for the last two weeks. The pick that I'm really looking at, though, is fading the Yankees against the lefty. Look at them. 212 batting average. Now, OPS is a little bit better, but and WRC Plus, sure. But this is a Yankees lineup that just went absolutely berserk yesterday. You had homers from Volpe, Austin Wells, DJ LeMayhew hit a homer. Yeah, no, that's just not... That's not sustainable. If there's a pick I'm looking at in this one, it is a first five team total under for the New York Yankees. Would not be shocked if I add that to the card. I'm going to go figure out my official plays right after I, I get this video. You know, uh, we'll not get this video live, but right after I record this, I'm going to go figure out my final plays. Not shock me if the Mets or Yankees team total under in the first five is in there. I would not take full game as much just because you see that. Mets 4.26 ERA, not been pretty good in the back in the back half of this, these games. So yesterday, I mean, we saw them giving up runs to the Marlins in that eighth and ninth inning. So no thanks on the full game. The first five, I think Quintana, who's coming off a home run derby himself, he gave up four home runs in his most recent start to Colorado. I think he keeps the ball down, gets those ground balls, which we know he's capable of. And I think this Yankees offense, which has shown yesterday they were absolutely cracked. Can DJ LeMayhew, can all these guys get those hits again? I would say no. They've really struggled against lefties, not only just over the past two weeks, just all season long. So if I'm betting this one, you'll probably see me on the Yankees team total under in the first five, as opposed to maybe taking a Quintana first uh, earned runs under, just because Quintana could go to the sixth, and I'd rather just get out and win or lose in that fifth inning. Now, next game, we have a, a start of another series, divisional series, Rays versus Blue Jays. Blue Jays, pretty sizable favorites. There is a little question mark here because... We do have Sean Armstrong projected to start for the Rays. He's more of an opener, so I don't know who comes after him. So take the righty, uh, take the you know Toronto versus right-handed pitcher with a grain of salt. It could be a lefty coming after him. Still, you've seen Toronto, borderline top 10 offense versus righties recently. There's a reason they're minus 160. Jose Barrios will go for him. 
I my system play has been to just fade the Rays against righties. You see them bottom ten in pretty much every single metric, and you see that batting average with runners in scoring position terrible. Problem is Jose Barrios. I hate him. I just hate him. It's just one of those guys that I feel like his stats look good on paper, four ERA, one point one eight WHIP, but he just I feel like he can't get those timely outs. So I need to double check how he's doing against runners in scoring position and two outs because. I feel like Brios, he gives up three earned runs. That's his start. Six innings pitch, three earned runs. That's what that comes out to around a four ERA, and he gets out of there. So I, probably not a game I'm touching. I'm not laying minus 160 uh, on the Blue Jays, but if I'm betting this one, it's probably maybe taking a Brios under an earned runs and just saying, hey, it's a system play. We fade the Rays until they can score three on a righty, but still at the same time, I'd have to look at how they've done against Brios before. Again, when you get to the bullpens, two back, bottom 10 bullpens recently, you could go with an over here because Armstrong is not good, but I'd have to see who comes after Armstrong to really be confident on taking an over. But that's probably the side I would lean is taking the over in this one. But again, if they have struggled against righty. So again, I could take Barrios under and earn runs. He could pitch decently. And then that 27th ranked bullpen comes in and gives up some more runs. Next game, Reds Braves game two of this series. Braves. Huge favorites. They're minus one and a half, minus 110. No surprise to get Chris Sale on the mound, and he's going to command a pretty sizable line. Now, again, no starter listed here. It appears to be Nick Martinez for the Reds. Obviously, I, don't quote me on that. Could be him, could not be him. At the end of the video, when we talk about some hot hitter matchups, a, a couple guys on the Braves are actually pretty good against Nick Martinez. We'll talk about that later. I mean, we got a lefty going up against the Reds. Reds obviously won yesterday. They smoke the Braves. Braves really couldn't get anything going, which hasn't been, you know, uncommon recently. Braves against righties last few weeks, 21st, 24th, 25th, struggling now down Ozzy Albies. <sighs> They're terrible. Then you got the Reds who were really good against righties, so not a huge surprise that they rocked Ronaldo Lopez, but against lefties, not as good, you know, about middle of the pack. Chris Sale, obviously, one of the toughest lefties you'll probably face in the league. There's a reason they're minus 250 on the money line. I'm not betting the Braves at that capacity. If anything, I'm probably leaning the under here because I don't trust the Braves at all to put up runs. And you see those bullpens been holding it down. I lean the under in this one. Probably not touching the Braves minus one and a half. This feels like maybe a 4-3, 3-2 three, 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 type final score. I'll take a chance on maybe taking the Braves on the under, maybe, and probably the under. That's probably all I'm taking. But again, wait to see who's starting for the Reds. Like I said, should be Nick Martinez. But again, I'm recording this at 6 a.m., so I don't really know. Next one, Phillies Twins. This is where the scene of a crime where we had Ranger Suarez under and earned runs, and he didn't show up. He gave up three on the dot, and the Twins got those timely hits. They were two for four with runners in scoring position against him. That's going to do it. They won, seven to two. Now, they again, the Twins are home underdogs, plus 135. Totals at eight, seven and a half on some books. Not a surprise there. You got Wheeler going. Woods Richardson will start for the Twins. A Woods Richardson, his numbers are pretty good. I just feel like every time I watch him, he throws it right down the middle of the plate and he's been able to get those outs. Now against the Phillies, a team that's honestly over the last two weeks, mediocre against righties, but they've been getting the timely hits. I feel like they get a lot of runners on base and in scoring position. Wouldn't mind taking a Woods Richardson over and hits allowed. That could be a prop that I'm looking towards because I feel like they're going to have plenty of hits and opportunities. Like I said, I feel like Woods Richardson throws it right over the middle of the plate. He just has decent location, so maybe he only gives up singles instead of home runs. But the Phillies are a team that can put up those hits. I can get those hit parades, and they begin the timely hits. 302 over the last two weeks with runners in scoring position against righties. Whereas on the flip side, Twins, after yesterday, a little bit better splits. Obviously, a lot of that came against a couple of runs game against Suarez and the rest against the bullpen. Not a surprise. You look at that bullpen ERA. Phillies bottom in the league. So again, I, if I'm betting the Phillies, it's probably through the first five. I won't touch their bullpen at all. I don't mind. Maybe the Phillies first five run line. I know it's pretty square taking that with uh, Wheeler on the mound. But again, it's Wheeler. He's been really, really good. And the Twins haven't been as good against righties. I'd have to look at how Wheeler has done against lefties because you're going to see the Twins stack a lot of lefties. And they have some good, talented lefties in there. But again, I do lean on the uh, the Phillies. If I had to bet them, I'd be first five money line or run line. I'm not really trusting that bullpen to hold things down. Again, an eight total. I could go either way on that. So I'd probably lean the Phillies first five run line if I had to bet anything in this game. Next one, Sox versus Rangers. Now, I don't know if we're going to do a nerfy after we lost Mariners Angels yesterday, which was just painful. There was only one run scored until what the eighth inning. And of course, it came in the first. This is probably my favorite nerfy of the day. Crochet versus John Gray. John Gray was better last year on nerfies. This year, been a little bit okay. But again, he's a righty going against the White Sox. White, I mean, look at their splits. 
29th in batting average versus righties. I believe the only team actually lower than them is the Rangers now. 30th in OPS, 30th in WRC+. And I'll give you a spoiler. One of the cold hitters and bad hitter matchups is Tommy Pham against Johnny Gray. Uh, not Johnny Gray. John Gray. And then you look at the Rangers against Crochet and a lefty. 29th in every metric so again this is a solid nerfy spot don't know how juiced it will be not a surprise see the rangers minus 130 again crochet could get dealt so i would not back any crochet props if anything i'm backing in this game it is the no run first inning the nerfy because you see those bullpens no thanks and then you see how these teams have done 29th of runners in square position we took lorenz and under earned runs yesterday he didn't deserve to give up only two but again, it's the White Sox. They can't get those timely hits. And then the Rangers over five for the last two weeks against lefties with runners in square position. Again, I like the nerfy in that game. If I'm going to bet anything, and I might add that to the card. Next one, we got Brewers and Cubs. Another low scoring game yesterday. We got Colin Ray going against Jamison Tyone. Eight and a half total. Closest to pick them. Cubs a little bit more favored here. Not a surprise. Ray has not been great. And he is a guy that's due some regression. But again, Ray going up against the Cubs. Cubs still an offense that I'm not scared of. You look at their metric, sure. Eighth in batting average. 14th, 12th. Still not an offense I'm honestly afraid of. And then you look at uh, Jamison Tyone. And he'll go up against the Brewers. They've been bottom 10 in every metric against righty. So again, I lean the under here. You see that Cubs bullpen ERA been really good. Brewers had so many chances yesterday against Assad and could not come through. I like Tyone to hold things down. I like Colin Ray to pitch up against his Cubs. Honestly, if I'm going to lose an under, I'm fine if Tyone you know, pitched well. If the Cubs want to go crazy on offense, do it. I just haven't seen enough consistently, and that's a team that appears to be selling on the, at the deadline. It's kind of what the reports are out there. So, again, I lean the under 8.5 in this game. Cubs been really good in the bullpen, and Brewers bullpen solid, and they've been pretty bad against righty. So, I like this one. Uh, you look at, we'll talk about Christian Yelich. He has pretty good splits against Tyone later on at the end of the video. Again, like I said, I appreciate you guys for supporting these videos, the breakdown. We're going to do them every Monday through Friday. So, like I said, appreciate it if you drop the like. Uh, it's a lot of work to go in to make the graphics and put up all the stats and stuff, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. And like I said, we'll do them every Monday through Friday. And eventually, probably next week, they'll probably start uh, spawning in on the Call on Our Shot channel. But kind of want to work through, through the twink, uh, not twinks, tweaks and things like that uh, this week. So, enjoy the second channel. Appreciate you guys for subscribing to this one as well. A lot of fun content over here. Next game. Royals Diamondbacks. Now you got another high total, nine and a half. Surprisingly, the Royals, if I'm not mistaken, were underdogs in this spot after smoking um, the the D backs yesterday. Um, again, I I don't know how you wouldn't want to back the Royals again. I mean, a little bit feels a little bit weird that they're plus 100, which I believe is the line. If I have a typo on here, then my mistake. But Jordan Montgomery's been really bad, and the Kansas City's bats are hot, especially Bobby Wood Jr. And they've been hitting lefties recently pretty well. Timely hits, both about mediocre, middle of the pack. And the Arizona Diamondbacks are just an offense that you never know what you're getting from them. They've been better against lefties, put up some some runs against Reagans yesterday, but then their bullpen fell apart. Bullpen's been pretty good recently, but again, that bullpen year rate going up and up. It's not a top 10 bullpen. We've talked about that before. Paul Sewald and all those guys have not been great. Kansas City's bullpen's been pretty good. Hunter Harvey, new addition. He's pitched decently for him. Again, if I'm betting this one, I'm probably leaning the Royals. A little bit weird that they're, you know, plus 100, if that's correct. But I lean the Royals. I just, Jordan Montgomery's a straight fade for me, if I'm being honest. Next one, we have Red Sox versus Rockies. Now, this is another one where we have a good chance that I put a pick in here. And I'll talk about that in a second. But yesterday, crazy game, 8-9 to nine final score. Um, we had Tanner Houks over and outs on our plays. He didn't pitch well at all, but he got the job done. And everything that could have gone wrong for the Red Sox kind of did because they lost the game and they used all the relievers. I talked about this yesterday. Kenley Jansen, one of their, their closer, he's out of the series due to, you know, heart problems. He is fine, but he doesn't want to pitch in cores. He's apparently had some bad uh, trips with altitude and stuff like that. So he's out for the series, which is why I said, hey, we like Tanner Houks over and outs. And they kind of had to leave him out there because they had no choice. Then they had to use a ton of bullpen arms. If I'm looking at an odds play, I'm not going to probably make it a one unit play, but I probably will throw it in a parlay. And that is Cooper Criswell over and out. It's like 14 and a half. It's minus 180. So I'm not doing a one unit on that. But look again, the Red Sox need a guy to go out there and give them five innings. They cannot afford for the bullpen to come in. They just, they don't have the arms in there. So again, I would lean Cooper Criswell's over and out. So he'll probably make it into the parlay of the day because he's been solid this season. Rockies, you know, they've been good numbers wise. They racked up Tanner Houck yesterday. But again, 167 with runners in scoring position. Not getting the timely hits. Got them yesterday. Can they get them today? I, 
I would bet against it because it's the Rockies. And then at the same time, you look at Boston again, facing another lefty, Ty Block here. Ty has been pretty dang bad. But again, the Red Sox not great recently. But the more and more lefties they start to see, they're going to start to hit the ball better. So I have not gotten those timely hits recently. Got them all against Gomber in that what, fifth inning. But still, probably uh, looking at this game, I lean the over. I still lean... I, it's a tough one, honestly. I, I Just because of how bad the Red Sox bullpen has been recently and how banged up they are, I would lean probably on the Rockies once again, plus one and a half, but I don't, I'm don't. i not betting the Rockies. I'm just not doing it. I'm not at that point in life where I want to bet the Rockies confidently. Again, if I'm going to bet anything, it's Cooper Coswell's probably over and outs. Next one, we got Astros versus A's. Yesterday, the A's shut out the Astros. What was it? 4-0 final score. I think I talked about how I leaned the under in that spot. Today, we got Bloss versus Speedo. I got no really good read here. Uh, Bido, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Bido, I don't know. He hasn't started a ton. Bloss is making his third start. I mean, you see the A's red hot top five offense against righties recently, and they've been really good getting those timely hits. 373 batting average with runners in scoring position. Ah, man, I just don't know a ton about Bloss. I'm not really going to trust him a ton here. Houston, do I think they get shut out again? Probably not. They are, you know, still favored in this game. And maybe it's just because it's the Houston Astros or the A's. And you're probably never going to see the Astros favored here unless the Astros legitimately put me up on the mound. And the A's have Mason Miller going all nine innings. But still, I would lean the A's here. I just think they're the better team. They're swinging a hotter bat. And at the end of the day, you got to trust teams that are hot. And they're red hot. Facing the guy making his, I think, third start. So I like them. Uh, and honestly, that would be what I'd pick if I had to take it. A's plus 115. Don't love betting against the Astros, but I think you got to keep doing it if if their bats aren't going to be scorching hot and you got a scorching hot A's offense, which when we get to the scorching hot hitters, they get a lot in there. Next one, Angels Mariners. This is going to be a nerfy. Um, I'm not going to take it because I have too much PTSD, but yesterday, Yurfy, terrible. Again, you got the Mariners' big favorites. Not a surprise. They just stink. They just, the Mariners are the one team you can consistently set a total at seven, seven and a half, and they keep going under. You might be like, eventually they'll go over. No, the team stinks against righties. You see all those splits. They've sucked with runners in scoring position. The Angels suck too, and the Logan Gilbert's been really, really good. Just turns through innings. I mean, he's going to get you six innings today, maybe even seven. I bet you his line's probably plus 110 for over 18 and a half. Bullpen's been pretty solid, both of them late, too. Yeah, sure, that's where you saw a lot of runs. Again, I like the no run first inning here, but it's going to be juiced. If I had to bet the game, I'd bet Mariners, but no, I'm not laying minus 180 on Mariners. I'm just not doing it pass at all costs on this one. No thanks. Final game of this day before we talk about some hot hitters and some guys in good matchups. Dodgers versus uh, Giants. Obviously, yesterday we took the Dodgers team total under four and a half. Not pretty, not sweaty. Blake Snell pitched pretty well today. Jordan Hicks versus Landon Knack. Um, Knack's obviously trying to make his way in the rotation. You got a couple guys coming back for the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw. You had River Ryan start yesterday. So Dodgers still trying to figure out that rotation. James Paxton, DFA. That pissed me off. But again, the Dodgers favored minus 145. Eight and a half total. I actually like the over in this game. I really do like the over. You got two bullpens that are struggling. You have a uh, Dodgers offense. that's pretty good against righties. Uh, they struggled yesterday against the lefty Blake Snell, but Blake Snell's quietly dialing it in. And then you have the Giants, though. The reason I don't love the over as much is because the Giants offense sucks. It sucks. I mean, they just cannot. Yesterday, they could have had first and second no outs, but instead we got a guy trying to stretch in two. Always got a, base, a guy stand on second. Giants just are not a team that I really trust to score runs. And the Dodgers, if they didn't have Tiasco Hernandez, I'm not sure if that game ends yet because they would have probably zero runs. So, same time, I like the over here. If I had to bet it, that's probably what I'd lean. I'd probably lean towards the uh, Dodgers team total over. Actually, there's probably a good chance I'm on Otani bases today. I need to check out uh, how he's done against Hicks, but I'm pretty sure Hicks, there was a lot of forcing fastball. I believe it was a meme going around on uh, on Twitter that was Otani's hot zone versus the four-seamer. It was just the whole dang strike zone. And I'm pretty sure that's all Jordan Hicks throws. So Otani bases might be on the card today. Uh, he's just, he's him. Yesterday he sucked, but it wasn't a surprise. When Otani's bases are plus 130, he ain't getting it done. That's just how it works. Did get close. Did have a, a liner down the line that was foul. I would probably lean Otani bases. Probably lean the Dodgers team total over instead of the regular over. But like I said, Dodgers bullpen banged up. Did get the job done yesterday, but they had to use a couple guys in there. Giants bullpen pretty bad recently too. Granted, a series against Coors is an ideal for your bullpen ERA. Do lean the over in this game. I lean the Dodgers once again. They're just the better team, better offense. You got to keep rolling with them. I think Kershaw is back tomorrow. But finally, what you guys have been waiting for, a new addition to the videos. 
We're going to talk about some hot hitters, some guys that are ice cold. And then we'll wrap the video talking about some guys that have probably had good success in their matchups today and some guys that have had bad success. We will start with the guys that are scorching hot and guys that are ice cold. These guys are on fire. Last seven days, minimum 10 plate appearances. I talked about Bobby Wood Jr. There's a reason he's on the thumbnail today. Hey, <laughs> what? Three hits in four straight? Scorching hot. He got plunked because they had no other choice. And then he was just missed the, uh, the cycle because he could not get a single on that final AB. Juan Soto, also been really hot. 6-11, seven extra base hits recently. I do have a note. I, we'll talk about him in a second. Hasn't been great against Jose Quintana. Then I talked for the Oakland Athletics. There's no surprise. <laughs> Three of them are here. Butler, Schumann, and Duhar. All these guys are scorching out, batting over 500 recently. Man, they are hot. And then Marcelo Zuna batting 500 as well with two extra base hits, both being home runs. Hey, those are your hot hitters of the day. Cold hitters. Adam Duvall. Yeah, you could just put that on the whole season. Batting like 170. He's 0 for 11. Last seven days. Christian Yellow is an interesting, interesting one. 0 for 8. Manny Machado 0 for 12. Matt Olson. Again, I'm really stocked. 0 for 15. Devers 1 for 16. And Seeger 1 for 13. Now, these guys aren't all the guys that are, you know, there's other guys in there that are pretty bad and batting 0 for the last few days. But I want to bring out guys that probably you might be putting in your slips. You might be like, oh, Manny Machado, give me it to him. Give it to me. Devers, give it to me. He's got to be able to hit tie block. Well, probably not. And Seeger. Yeah, I mean, he's got five walks. That doesn't do anything for you. Unless you're taking an HRR prop. So I want to bring in the cold hitters, guys that are bigger names. Obviously, Duvall's not the biggest name ever, but he was the guy with the worst batting average recently. Well, him and, and Manny Machado. I'm going to bring guys in there that are guys that you normally would think would be pretty good, but have been pretty bad recently. Again, wouldn't shock me if these guys are back in there tonight, tomorrow because, well, it's hard to improve your average if you're over 15, Matt Olson. Unless you go three for three, then you won't make the cold hitters. But until then, you will be back here tomorrow, most likely. And finally, we wrap up the video talking about guys in good matchups and guys in mad matchups. Now, I already talked about a couple guys here. Marcel Azuna swinging a hot bat again. I, it projects to be Nick Martinez uh, for the Reds. We didn't know if it was him at the beginning of the video. Could be him. If it is, hey, Marcel Azuna, 500, three extra base hits. Vladdy's got good splits against Armstrong. So does George Springer. But again, he could probably just the opener. An interesting one I liked, Carlos Santana, three for five, six walks. <laughs> I'd be interesting to see if he walks today. Wheeler, not a guy that walks a lot of guys. Maybe Santana gets the walk. I don't know. Weird. And Christian Yelich, who, oh, did we talk about him? Ice cold. 0 for 8 recently, last few days. Well, he's good splits against Tyone. I backed him the last time he faced Tyone. He went hitless. So 10 for 29, pretty good splits against Tyone. But again, he's been pretty cold. So I don't know if I want to trust Yelich there. Now let's talk about some guys with bad batting averages. Will Smith, that guy's hit or miss. 0 for 6 for Jordan Hicks. Salvador Perez, 0 for 6 against Jordan Montgomery. DJ LeMahieu, honestly, you don't even need Quintana there. DJ LeMahieu stinks, 1 for 10. But in general, but is this year, Quintana, 1 for 10. Again, Juan Soto skipping Tommy Pham, 1 for 7. Two walks against Quintana. Again, like I said, I like the Yankees team total under in the first five. Eddie Rosario, he sucks too this year. And like I said, Tommy Pham, there's a reason I like that nerfy in that uh, White Sox Rangers game. because Tommy Pham, who was the guy that ruined the nerfy yesterday. He had a solo bomb, right? Solo bomb to ruin the, to get the Yerfy. Again, he's not doing well against Gray. You got Crochet to hold things down. Probably going to be on that nerfy, though, in that game, as long as it's not too juiced. But again, that is the hot hitter matchups. Those are guys that are sucking in their matchups. Hopefully, you guys like the new additions. Again, if you have any other things you want to see in the videos, I drop it down below, and I'll try my best. Again, it takes a lot of time to put together these videos. So if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. You're a real one. I appreciate it. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the second channel. Again, these will start to go on the Call on Our Shot channel probably next Monday. I don't want to do half on here one week. Like three of this here, here and then two. And I'll probably just do all five on the second channel this week. So, again, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Go check out some other second channel videos if you want. When we do post our best bets video, I will link it on the screen. So, you can go see what our official best bets are. Like I said, I haven't decided on them, but Yankees team total under probably in there. And so, it'll probably be that crochet nerfy. So, you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. We'll have some Dinger Tuesday picks in that one as well. And maybe that's something I add to the videos going forward is maybe some sort of Dinger Tuesday type thing or maybe some home run. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll try to find some guys that have hit home runs in their respective matchups. Who knows? Like I said, this is just day two of the breakdown of every MLB game. Hope you enjoyed. It's Austin signing out. I'll see you guys back tomorrow with another breakdown. And probably see you back here again, Matt Olson, unless you figure things out tonight. Unlikely because you stay. This has turned into a Matt Olson uh, attack barrage. That is what it is. Bobby Wood Jr., we love you. See you guys back tomorrow. Peace.